How to play Heel Blades Worn. Let's start with a summary. Heel Blades Worn provides 100% alacrity, fury, regeneration, resistance, swiftness, and vigor. It also provides 22 to 25 might after some ramp up. It provides 90% plus of resolution, up to 80% protection, and up to 25% quickness. Finally, it also provides frequent ages and stability. You heard that right, Bladesworn can provide every boon in the game, albeit not permanently. What's the downside then, I hear you ask? The healing output of Bladesworn is limited and it cannot be used in high-intensity healing fights, at least not as the primary healer. Luckily, Harvest Temple Challenge Mode is not a heal-intensive fight and hence, it is perfectly capable of fulfilling the kite role. Let's check out how Heal Alec Bladesworn works. First, for the gear I am using Fall Giver's gear with durability runes. The runes help with protection up time. Giver's gear is commonly used in Harvest Temple Challenge Mode for safety, however, you are free to go with another heal-focused affix as well. For sigils, concentration is used to cap out boon duration together with food and utility, and for the second sigil transference for additional healing, alacrity is given by the trait Daring Dragon, when you use Dragon Trigger 1, 2, or 3. Notice that Alec is applied for the full amount, no matter the charging level and without hitting a target. Lush Forest makes using the first round of ammo on ammunition skills reduce your cooldowns, with an internal cooldown of 1 second. Notice how the cooldown of Banner of Tactics is reduced when Gunsaber skills are used. In the Discipline trait line we have Versatile Rage to gain flow on Weapon Swap, Warrior Spirit for increased movement speed, Fast Hands for reduced Weapon Swap cooldown and Double Standards for improved banners. In the tactics trait line, marching orders is an important trait, giving a soldier's focus periodically, which is consumed when you use and hit with a dragon trigger skill. Hence, if you don't hit an enemy, you don't consume soldier's focus and therefore you don't give the respective boons from it. Soldier's focus is important, because it gives might, protection, and heals, within a 600 radius. The middle column has two valid options, one is shrug it off, which is an automatic condition cleanse and heal with a 25-second internal cooldown that triggers whenever you have one condition on you. This means, it is up for every Jaitan fear. The other valid option is empowering allies for more might, however, you provide more than 20 might without it, so it depends on your squad if you need the condition cleanse, or the additional might. Finally, Vigorous Shouts makes our shout skills heal allies, which is also what makes Shrug it off heal. The utility loadout consists of to the limit, for flow and healing, defense and tactics banner for boons, most notably stability, and barrier, for great justice to sustain might and fury and finally war banner as an emergency AoE revive. For weapons, we use sword for movement and warhorn for boons and barrier. Warhorn 4 provides permanent swiftness and some quickness, while cleansing cripple, immobilize and chill. Warhorn 5 gives barrier, vigor, and cleanses conditions. Both Warhorn skills are also blast finishers. However, the only combo fields you can provide in this loadout are light combo fields from banners, which make your blast finisher cleanse conditions. If needed, you can swap War Banner to Rampage for more CC. Inside Rampage, skills 2, 4, and 5 provide CC. Together with a full charge gun Saber 3, you can do 750 break bar damage. The general gameplay loop revolves around using Warhorn 4 and 5, your banners and for great justice off cooldown. You can go into Dragon Trigger whenever you have soldiers focus up. In order to use Lush Forest effectively, you want to use your ammunition skills only when they are at full charges. This however is only really important if you need the CD reduction to, for example, have stability more often available. So don't sweat it if you don't pay attention to that. Since Gunsaber 3 is your only hard CC skill in this loadout, you want to save the 3 charges for whenever you need to CC. You can save your War Banner for whenever you need an emergency revive. Your heal skill, to the limit, can be used whenever healing is needed, and as shown, at the beginning of the fight to immediately provide alacrity. If might ramp up is an issue, you can also use the second charger for great justice at the start of the fight. Finally, a note on the protection applied by consuming soldiers focus with Dragon Trigger. It gets applied when you hit with your Dragon Trigger within a 600 range circle around you. This means you can also use Dragon Trigger 2 as a gap closer and immediately provide protection, might and healing by consuming soldiers focus.
Now, let's have a look at some Harvest Temple Challenge Mode gameplay. At the start, I just start to keep all of the boons rolling. As soldiers focus is up and there is a target to hit, I do so with Dragon Trigger for boons. Here I just use the heal skill to top everyone off again. Use Gunsaber 3 for CC. Banners, Warhorn, and Dragon Trigger for boons again, which bar some exceptions are used off cooldown. Since the phase is almost over, I save Tactics Banner here to have the super speed and stability up for the intermission. Use Gunsaber 3 again for CC. Spam your usual skills for boons. If people get damaged, use your shouts to heal. In case there are any downed people, don't hesitate and throw War Banner on them. I am saving Tactics Banner here again for the intermission. Our hand use Gunsaber 3 to CC. You can push from range thanks to your gunsaber. Mordromoth is the phase where Lush Forest is really important. If you don't proc it, your tactics banner will not be ready for every wave. If you have proc'd it a few times, you will have it ready and the stability will cover all three waves in terms of duration.
To deal with the Jaitan fear, we follow a simple sequence. You can use Dragon Trigger 2 to get back from red to the stack, which will also apply protection to your group if you have soldiers focus up. Then you want to use Warhorn 5 for cleansing leftover conditions and to give a barrier to mitigate the damage of the spread mechanic. Protection is also supplied by the durability rune, provided you did not get hit in the 20 seconds before the fear. Ideally defense banner is used like you can see now, to supply barrier for the incoming damage of the fear. Notice also, the fear is instantly cleansed, because of the trait shrug it off and furthermore we have permanent resistance from tactics banner as well. So overall, there are multiple safety layers to deal with the Jaitan fear. You can also use Sword 2 or Gunsaber 5 to get back to the stack if you are uncomfortable with Dragon Trigger 2, however, I recommend doing it that way, since it will also supply additional protection and healing in one go. For Su-1 it's basically business as usual. Whenever you are at the stack, you spam your booms. In the meantime, remember that you can always swap to Gunsaber and use Gunsaber ammunition skills to trigger Lush Forest. Notice how I saved Tactics Banner here for a bit, since there was no abomination around and hence no need for immediate stability. I used it now such that everyone has stability to deal with the mechanics. During the final orb phase, you want to keep supplying booms, however, you also want to have your stability, Aegis and your CC ready for the intermission. This time, I immediately use Tactics Banner on the stack, because Abominations and the Obliterator are around. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed watching and have fun trying out Bladesworn.